Hi, I'm Chad, and today I'm going to show you how to send an NPS survey to people who visit your website using our in-app messaging feature. Now, if you're new to customer I.O. or you're new to our in-app messaging feature, you might not have known that you send in-app messages to people who visit your website, but you can. They're not limited to mobile apps. And NPS surveys are a really common use case for people who visit your website, as opposed to mobile apps where you're more likely to send a message asking somebody to rate your app in the app store. It's another common way to get feedback. But we are set up. I'm, I've already added an in-app message to our workflow here. So I'm going to start adding content. I'm going to call this Web NPS. Now, we have a basic template for NPS surveys. And you're absolutely welcome to use this. But um, to show how easy it is to set up messages like this, I'm going to start from scratch. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is change my message from a modal to an overlay. Modals uh, can interrupt user flow, and they're really good for like important announcements and things like that. But I don't really want to interrupt the user flow to uh, get their feedback. So I'm going to set this up as an overlay. Now, if I did have this as a modal, and I wanted to say, for example, I have a mobile app and a website, and I want to limit this message just to my website, I would add a page rule here. It says like web contains star. And that would limit this message to just my website as opposed to my iOS and Android apps. Um, but I don't need to do that because I'm going to send an overlay message, which is again, web only. Now we also have an expiration period over here. This says, you know, after sending this message, we'll, um, it'll expire after 30 days. If I had a time sensitive message, I might set this lower. I don't think NPS surveys are particularly time sensitive. I'm, I'm comfortable gathering feedback over a long period of time. So I'm going to leave this at 30 days. Just letting you know those settings are there. Now we are ready to add content. The first thing I'm going to do is modal messages um, have an auto width. Uh, but that can be pretty long. I'm on a, a pretty wide monitor here. So I'm going to limit this to, let's say, 600 pixels. Now we are ready to add some content. And I'm going to add some scaffolding to my message. Um, I want to add a heading over here on the left and a close button here on the right. But these columns, I, my close button probably doesn't need to take up half the top of my message. So I'm going to make a 90-10 split here and add a close button over here on the right and a heading on the left. There we go. Now, I'm ready to start adding buttons. You can also add some, you know, if you wanted to add some flavor text to your message, something like, uh, you know, whoop, let's actually select the box here. Uh, but now we're ready to add some buttons. Now we have button components that are already ready made for this. If I had a different number of buttons, I could add a row with a number of columns and then add buttons to um, each column. But we already have this handy 11 button setup, which is already pre-made for NPS surveys. And there we go. Now each button will dismiss the message and it also has a tracked name. And the track name is the rating, 0 through 10. Um, this is how I will gather feedback within the campaign um, to know kind of how I've done or, or how, how a user has rated my product here, 0 through, through 10. And if that's all I want to do, if all I want to do is gather feedback within this one campaign, then I'm ready to go. I can save my changes and move on. But I don't think that's all I want to do. I want to group the these responses into detractors, passive responses, um, that'd be seven and eight, and promoters, nine and 10. Um, and I want to act on those responses. Maybe I want to send an email thanking somebody for their response, or uh, for detractors, maybe I want to Slack, send a Slack message to my technical support or customer success teams asking if they can reach out to the customer and see if there's anything we can help them with. Um, or promoters, maybe I want to send a Slack notification to my marketing team and see if they want to reach out to the customer for a friendly quote or a testimony. So to do that, I want to group these track names by calling them detractor. Um, and so that means I'm going to add detractor for zero through six, uh, passive for seven and eight, and promoter for nine and 10, but you don't have to watch me type. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment while I update these buttons. All right, I've updated all my buttons, so now we're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm gonna save my changes and go back to the workflow. 
Now, I want to uh, handle responses depending on whether somebody is a detractor, passive, or a promoter. So to do that, I'm going to drag a wait until into my workflow. What this means is that I'm going to wait until somebody responds to my NI message. Now, I'm going to set up conditions based on the response to the message. So I'm going to set up a message condition. And in this case, I'm going to use the in-app message, web MPS. When somebody clicks it and the response contains the tractor, I want to handle that. I'm going to set up a similar condition for passive and another one for promoter. One more condition. All right, but now I have one more step, right? So these conditions handle when somebody uh, clicks one of the numbers at the bottom of my NPS survey. But what if somebody um, closes the message without responding? Well, in that case, unless I set a max time, somebody would get stuck in this wait until branch forever. They'd be stuck in this campaign um, and they'd never come out of it. So what I want to do is add a max time. And I'm going to set this to 30 days, the expiration period for my message. Now, if somebody closes the message or they don't get, um, they don't return to my website and they don't get my NPS survey, they'll fall out of this campaign harmlessly. No, no harm, no foul. They won't get stuck um, in this step forever. So now I'm going to save. And now I've got my conditions. Um, I can, let's see, I've got detractors, passive, and uh, promoters. Now, maybe I want to send an email to people based on how they respond. Maybe I want to send an email to everybody. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is maybe I want to send a Slack notification to technical support or customer success for people who are detractors, and maybe another one to a different one to my marketing team, depending on uh, how somebody responds to promoters. But um, we've already spent long enough in this video. You don't want to watch me um, create new messages. So we're going to get rid of those. We're just going to demonstrate the actual NPS message. So I am ready to start my campaign. There we go. Now, here we go. This is my campaign here. Um, I am going to send a message through our documentation website. Um, I have this workspace. This is a test workspace. So I've got it set up to send drafts. So now I'm going to trigger my message actually send it. Now, could take a moment for the message to show up, but there we go. Hey, it's already at the top. Um, now, I think we've done pretty well, so I'm going to respond with a 10. And we are going to see that tracked response pop up. Now, it might take a moment for the click to return to customer I.O. And there we go. My uh, my, my response is now logged in my campaign metrics, and you can see that I have a promoter. Um, now, again, if we wanted to set up this workflow to handle the different responses, we could totally do that. But as a part of this video, we've set up an NPS survey, we've sent it, and we've logged the response, whether somebody's a promoter. And that's how you set up an NPS survey for your in-app audience on your website. Thanks, everybody.